Hey guys, in this video we'll be taking a look at how we can integrate the third person character blueprint from Epic into the space shooter template. Um, and it's actually quite simple. If you've downloaded the latest update 1.1.1, I've included a new macro library in a specific folder we should automate most of this stuff. So hopefully this short tutorial will help you uh, go ahead and integrate uh, seamlessly the third person uh, character blueprint. I will warn you, this is very basic. Uh, you will have to obviously work on it to add uh, the functionality that you need. So here are the simple steps uh, that we'll do from a fresh new project from the latest version. We'll go ahead and create a new input key that will be used to enter and exit the ship we'll actually add the third person character blueprint uh, template into the project. We'll go ahead and modify the macro library to add the character reference, which will be um, the character that will be spawned from the ship. And then we'll use the macro library um, to exit the ship from the, from the player ship and to enter the ship when you're processing the third person character. So let's go ahead and do the very first thing here. And I'm going to go in a, a new fresh project here. We are in the test level. And the first thing we'll do is we go to project settings, input, and we'll add a new action mapping. Let's call this enter exit ship. And we're gonna give it in my case, X keyboard shortcut X. You can go ahead and add whatever you want. You should also have one for, um, you know, gamepad support, but for now we'll just go ahead and click on X. And if I click play here, you'll notice on the test level that we're not even in thrust mode. So let's go ahead and fix that. Um, go to blueprints, actors, game modes, BP enable thrust mode. Go ahead and drop that in your level, save all. And now when you click play, you'll notice that now we are in thrust mode. And if you click Q or press Q rather, you'll go down. If you press E, you'll go up. Very good. Okay. So the next step is to add the third person character blueprint from Epic. So if we go back here, we go to content, click on the content, add new. And all the way at the top, it says add feature or content pack. When you click here, you'll see that there are several options. We want to add a blueprint feature. And this person, in this case, we want to add third person. Notice that the exact same process can be done for first person, if you so want to do it. I'm going to do it on the third person in this case, because that's what I showed on the video. But make sure that, um, you know, if you want a th the first person, you can go ahead and do it. And the steps should work exactly the same. So click on third person, add project close and now you'll notice that you have a few extra folders besides the AST, geometry mannequin third person etc so now we have the the mannequin added so now we need to go ahead and add the actual character reference to the macro library so if you go to AASST blueprints actors go to TP character third person character you'll see that there's a new blueprint here it's a blueprint um, uh, macro library go ahead and open that go to mc leave ship double click there and notice in this part it says spawn third person character into the scene we need to go ahead and select the actual third person class here so click here and start typing third person and select third person character save exit and now that we've done that, we want to go into the VP player ship and handle the exiting of the ship. So go back to the project here. Go back to the root folder, blueprints, characters, player. And we can do it either in player in VP player ship or VP ship one. It doesn't really matter. We're going to go ahead and create on the base one here. Make sure you're on the event graph. And it doesn't matter where you do it. I'm just going to do it right here. Right click and start typing enter exit. And you'll notice that you have an action uh, event here that's called enter exit ship. This is exactly what we just added, right? So from pressed, drag out and start typing MC. And you'll see that two macros pop up, 
MC enter ship and MC leave ship. We want to leave the ship, right? We are in the VP player ship. We're controlling the ship. We want to go ahead and leave the ship. So all we need to do here is provide the reference to which ship we're leaving. And you can drag out and type self. And you'll see that says get a reference to self. That's all we need to do. Let's compile. Let's save. Taking a little bit here. Then if we go back to our test level and we land the ship and press X, you'll notice that we just spawned the character. It's giant and it just crashed with the ship, but at least we know that this is working, right? This is the epic character blueprint that we just spawned. Okay, so that part is working. Now we're going to go into the third person character blueprint and handle entering the ship and doing a few extra things uh, that are not on this list, just adjusting the blueprint. So let's go back to content, go to third person BP, blueprints, third person character. And we don't need to touch any of this. We are going to now use the same exact key Actually, before we do that, let's let's just think about this for a second. Um, we want the player to enter the ship when we press the key, but we only want the player to enter the ship when the player is close enough to the ship, right? Uh, if we just put the macro and say, okay, well, as soon as you press the, the key, we enter the ship, we can be anywhere in the world and we would just possess the, the ship, right? That's not realistic. So what we need to do is we need to create a little bit of code here to make sure that we're overlapping the ship, we're close enough to the ship, and then we can actually enter the ship, right? So before we even do that, let's go ahead and go to the viewport here and let's add a new component. Let's, let's add a sphere collision and let's call this ship collision. Doesn't really matter. And notice the size here. We're going to scale this up. We can scale it to whatever you want. I'm going to scale it like here. And then go to the collision settings. And you're going to say overlap all. Oops. Overlap all. You want to make sure that you're overlapping everything. Okay. We also want to make sure, as you saw, the player, uh, the character is really, really big. Uh, because obviously the template make sure that things are scaled down so you can create bigger levels, right? So let's go ahead and scale this down, the entire um, castle component. If you go all the way up here, there's a scale. Let's make it uh, 0 0.25, 0 0.25, 0 0.25, whoops, 0.25. And let's grab the camera and get it a little bit closer here. So we've added a ship collision mesh, which means that when we when we get close to the ship and this overlaps, we know that we can now enter the ship. We scale down the character a little bit smaller so it doesn't look like a giant coming out of the ship. And now we need to do a little bit of logic, right? So selecting the ship collision, we're going all the way down here to the events and we say uh, on component begin overlap, right? So we've overlapping. We want to make sure that we're overlapping with the ship. Right. So in this case, we say, OK, well, uh, let's grab from the other actor and grab the class, get class. And actually, you know what? Let's do something a little bit different. Let's have a hashtag actor hashtag and the tag is going to be player. And if this is true, drag out and do a branch, right? So we, we have overlapped with the player, right? Which the ship should have it. We want to create a Boolean that states that we can now board the ship. So go ahead to variables and click on create variable. And let's call this can board. Okay. Drag it out. Set it to true. And now we're going to do something very similar when you end the overlap. On component and overlap, we are going to copy this 
or actually even better we don't even need to do this on component and overlap we simply want to make can board false so what are we doing when you're overlapping the ship with the ship collision that we just clicked here you're checking that the actor that we just uh, overlapped has the tag player which the ship BP player ship should have and if this is true make this boolean true when you exit the overlap when you end the overlap make this false now we want to do enter exit ship which is exactly what we did and from pressed we want to type MC but now we want to do enter ship right so we want to enter the ship here and there are two things that we need to reference one is the character reference which is this character right so you're going to do self but we also need to pass the ship reference which ship are we going to board the reason for that is because in the future i may add uh more functionality or you can do it yourself where you can have multiple ships so which ship are you actually boarding which ship are you possessing so we need to pass a ship reference and that reference is right here on the overlap so actually we need to add uh, we need to add this and, and save this as a variable. So we're going to come from other actor and, and type cast to pawn. And then from pawn, right click and say promote to variable. And let's call this ship ref for reference. Overlap. And now we are going to pass this ship reference to the macro. Okay. So I'm going to leave it right here just for a second so you can see. We're overlapping an actor. We're checking it has the player tag. If true, make sure you can board. And if that's true, also grab the reference for the actor, which is going to be a character where we need to have a pawn. So cast to the pawn component make this a, a set it as the ship reference which is an actual pawn and that ship reference will be passed here because that is the the actual pawn that will be possessed okay so let's try it out so if we click play here it's gonna go ahead and come here onto the light and we go down we we press x we see now that the player is scaled down, it's going super fast, but at least it looks a little bit more realistic. And then when we get close to the ship, we press X. Now we see that we've boarded the ship and we can now control the ship. So there's one more thing that we need to fix. Notice that the default behavior of the player ship is when you hit something, the screen shakes because the ship is thinking that it just hit an obstacle, right? And if you recall one of the videos that I did before, there are three types of collision. There's the, the, the I guess, the default collision, which means that you pass through the object. There's the uh, solid collision, which means that you bounce off. And there's the collision that is bound, which means that nothing happens. You take no damage, uh, but the ship doesn't uh, lose collision, right? It just kind of like gets stuck there. So what we need to do is we need to make the third person character a type of bound, right? So if we come here to the third person character and type tag, we want to make sure that we add a new actor tag and we call it bounds with capital B. Go ahead and compile it. Click on play. Exit the ship. And now notice that even though the camera's messed up, when I when I when I get close to the ship, there is no collision and the ship takes no damage. So really quickly, let's just fix that. If we go to um, the camera boom, let's clear this off real quick. Let's deselect do collision test, so it doesn't do that weird thing. And let's make sure that we go to the character movement and we change the. Uh, Let's see, not gravity scale, but the walking speed. Sorry, looking here, max walk speed. 
make it something like 350 and crouch is something like 200 and if you want to be a little bit more accurate you would also uh tone down the um the jump where's jumping here swimming flying just type it here jump oops jump z velocity will change this to something like maybe 450. the reason i'm making those adjustments is because since we scale down the character to 25 percent of its size we want to make sure that that the speed and the and the and the settings for jump are also adjusted otherwise uh it's going to look silly and obviously those are adjustments that you have to play with so press x notice that now because we have no collision test you don't have the clipping we're getting close you can even jump on top of the ship if we press X again, we board the ship and we can go. We stop, we go down, we exit the ship. There we go. Cool. So notice that obviously there are a um, couple of other things that you'll need to work on. Add all the functionality that you need to the uh, third person character pawn. Basically what's happening is we are now controlling this pawn and any controls, any abilities, any input keys, extra input keys will work seamlessly. So if you have a completely separate uh, asset, let's say a third person shooter, uh, you should be able to do something very similar. All we're doing here is possessing this pawn, spawning the pawn outside of the ship and possessing it. And now you have full control. And when you overlap the ship and you press the key again, we're destroying the third person character and we're repossessing the ship and now you have full control of the ship fairly simple but using the macro library hopefully it was even simpler so um hopefully this was useful i know this was a very big uh you know very popular request follow the tutorial uh if anything goes wrong and you have any other questions please feel free to leave a comment on the video or uh just email me directly hopefully this was helpful I'm so sorry this is taking me so long. I've been super busy, uh, but there it is. Make sure you have, again, the latest version of the template, and you should be good to go. And again, here's a quick uh, snapshot of everything we did in this video. Thank you guys so much, and I'll see you on the next video.